Hello, welcome back to my channel. So it's been, what, two weeks since I've vlogged? A week since I've vlogged? I don't totally know. I did actually end up vlogging all of last week and I'll get to that in just a second, but I was on a trip with my family for eight days, so I kind of messed up a few things with my booktube channel. Whatever, we're back on track now and we're excited. So this first clip, I am going to have a few announcements to make, so it's gonna be kind of long, and I feel like this vlog is gonna be a little bit long, but we shall see. So the first announcement I wanna make is, I went on a trip with my family and I vlogged part of it. I took video the entire time we were there and I'm gonna come like, Put it all together into a compilation. I don't think I'm going to put it on this channel. I have another channel from when I was in school and I think I'm going to put it on there so I can share it to friends and family. But as soon as that is complete, I will link it down below or in the cards or somewhere. So if you guys really want to watch it, you can. But in the meantime, have and enjoy this little compilation of my favorite moments that I caught on video. So now let's get into the book part of this video. Today is January 2nd. I got home today. Uh, we were in the car for like eight and a half hours today. And then I got here and I was like, I got so much stuff I gotta do. So I filmed my TBR video. I edited my TBR video and I'm trying to upload it right now. So let's hope I can get this done today because tomorrow I'm gonna film my wrap up, edit my wrap up and get it uploaded by Monday. It's going to be a busy weekend with filming and editing and all of that kind of stuff. But in between all of that, I really want to start reading because I actually did manage to read a book yesterday so I'll mention that in a second but I just feel like it's the 2nd of January and I haven't read anything even though I've read one whole book. This is a really bad pattern that I get into and it's actually something that I'm going to talk about first right now. So one of my main goals for 2021 of course is to read the books that I own and haven't read. But I have kind of another goal that I haven't spoken about on my channel at all. And I'm so sorry if you can hear my computer fan. But that goal is going to be I want to be easier on myself when it comes to reading. And I actually want to read less books. I feel like that's something you almost never hear from people. Everyone's always making goals of I want to read more in the new year. But I genuinely want to read less than I read last year. I read... 200 books last year, which was amazing. I managed to make my goal. I managed to do it. It was kind of ridiculous in the month of December how much I had to read to make that goal. And when you do that math, it means that I was reading more than one book every two days, which is crazy, crazy, because I'm reading huge ass books. So my goal is to read less and I want to focus on other hobbies and things that I enjoy doing. I really want to pick up painting again. I haven't painted basically in a year because well one 2020 was just kind of a bad year especially for creative minded people to make creative things. I mean it was bad for everyone of course but I think that a lot of creatives just got hit in a way that they hadn't been hit ever before and I was definitely one of them. 
And so I want to pick that back up, of course. I also really want to watch more movies. I don't watch movies. I don't do it because they're so long and I feel like they take up so much time that I could be reading instead. I want to make the goal that I could watch X number of movies like I do with my books, but I think if I did that, it would be almost too much pressure on myself. So I'm thinking about putting a spread in my reading journal near kind of the beginning of the year to document how many movies I watched this year. And I'd love to I'd love to do 50, but I think that's asking too much of myself to put a number on it. So I think I'm just going to say I want to watch more movies. Yeah, I'm trying to read less books. My goal on Goodreads for 2021 is to read 120 books, which is approximately, it's not even approximately, it's exactly 10 books a month. I know that in some months I'm gonna do more than this, but I really, really want to get away from reading 17 to 20 books a month which is what I was doing the last few months of 2020. I just did my TBR, so I actually need to pick out a new book for me to read. I'm really wanting an audiobook because I'm going to be doing a lot of stuff around my apartment the next few days to make up for the fact that I was gone for eight days. So an audiobook would be really nice. I'm not sure at this moment what I'm going to be picking up, but it might be something that was off my TBR. I'm realizing now I should make a rule if I read something that's off my TBR and then later I flip some of my cards. If you're confused, go watch that video. And then the book that I already read counts for the prompt that I just flipped. Can I use it or can I not use it? I feel like in January, I'm going to say I can't use it and I'm going to see if that really affects me, which means I'm going to be picking from books that I actively know so that I can quickly flip those other prompts and hopefully read books for those. But if I don't, I don't. It's whatever. I can read off the list and that's what's beautiful about it. What I should mention is the book I read yesterday is a tradition. Every single January 1st, I read one of the books in the Chronicles of Narnia. It kind of changes. I feel like the last three or four years I read The Horse and His Boy because it's one of my favorites, if not my favorite. Before that, I it, it just kind of changes every single year. So this year I decided I didn't want to do The Horse and His Boy again. So I ended up doing The Magician's Nephew and I have the audiobooks, the radio theater ones, which are really good and honestly the only way to partake in these books because if you partake in them any other way, they kind of have some racist undertones unfortunately, but if you take part in them through the radio theater ones, they really lose all of that and they hold true to the story and they're quite enjoyable. I love them. I love them so much. I read them every year. So I will be continuing on with some of those as the month continues. But since I want to count them towards like buying books, I need to wait until my prompts show up. So I need to read something off my list. So I think the next physical book I'm going to be picking up is definitely going to be Summer of Salt by Katrina Leno because I'm just dying to read it. But I need to pick up an audiobook and I should probably pick up Malice because I'm in the middle of it. But I have like 10 or 12 audiobooks checked out from my library right now and because of how I do TBR bingo I can only put four of them on the list at a time so I should probably read one of those next I would assume that would make the most sense so what I'm most excited to read is The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune I think is his name but that didn't make it in bingo so I think instead of doing that I'm gonna pick up Dread Nation or The Hazel Wood um, because those two made it and if I read those two and A Winter's Promise I can flip some cards or I can read those two and some other combinations of ones. I know that tomorrow oh I'm supposed to pick up Court of Miracles tomorrow and Cemetery Boys on Monday. Okay I'm gonna have to do some thinking off camera because that just like negates everything. The final thing I need to talk about, I know I haven't even selected a book, but whatever. The final thing I need to talk about with you is how I'm going to be doing my wrap ups. So it's very obvious that my TBR game is going to be different this year. I'm hoping to do TBR bingo all year long as long as it continues to work for me. So we'll see. I might change my mind because it's it's all about me enjoying reading. So my wrap ups are going to be different though. I'm going to be doing a much more balancing the books style 
video like uh, Emma from Drinking By My Shelf does so that I can balance the TBR, the bingos and see if I only bought books for the amount of bingos that I accomplished and whether or not I accomplished those things. So what I am thinking right now is the balancing the books, balancing the bingo, whatever I end up calling it is going to be more of this is the book I read, this is the prompt it fulfilled, if it fulfilled a prompt, this is what I rated it, maybe a really quick one or two line review, maybe a really quick one or two line summary, and then going in and showing you the books that I bought and if they are balanced or not. And then I'm gonna have to think of punishments, which I have some ideas for myself and it'll all work out. That's kind of what I'm thinking. I feel like I was going somewhere with that and I kind of lost my train of thought halfway through it. But yeah, so it's, oh, so I just thought of it. So it's going to be very much more this is kind of really quick stuff that you need to see. And then in my vlogs every single week is going to be way more in-depth thoughts that I have about those books. So if you want to see really in-depth thoughts, you need to start watching my reading vlogs, which if you're already watching my reading vlogs, you see this. If you're not watching my reading vlogs, you don't know this because you're not watching this. I'll make an announcement in my wrap up at the end of the month too. Hopefully I remember to do that. Note to self, do that. My wrap ups are going to be much more about balancing my shelves and just quickly getting through all the books I read that month. And my vlogs are going to be an in depth summary of how I felt about those books. Good morning. I've been kind of having a slow slash easy morning because even though I have like a million things I need to get accomplished today, I just kind of felt like I deserve to have a slow go into it, especially, you know, after traveling for so long. So it is approximately 11 a.m. I've had lunch slash breakfast because it was a frozen pizza, so you don't really call that breakfast, but I had it at like 10 a.m., so it's breakfast time. And then I kind of laid in bed for a while. I was gonna read in bed, but I was like, you know what? I'm really trying to make an effort this year to not read in every spare moment that I have. So I pulled up some booktube and I still have like 20 plus videos to catch up on from the eight days I was gone, but I'm making a dent into it and I'm happy about that. I've been working on some journaling stuff for 2021. I had a few things like prepped before I left, but as I was gone, I thought of a few more things I wanted. So I've started officially, let's hope I don't move you, a balancing page so that I can keep track of all the books that I read and if they count for bingo or if they don't count for bingo and whether or not I get a bingo so whether or not I can buy a book because in the odd case that I buy a book before I get a bingo I then like have to read those five like I have to get a bingo or punishment will happen and I have figured out a punishment but I didn't talk about it in my TBR video so I guess I'll just talk about it in my wrap up but if you're super curious my punishment is going to be that I if I buy a book and I don't get a bingo for it I have to read that book the next month um, and if I don't do that I don't have a punishment planned for that but I'll get to that bridge if I have to I'll I don't think that's how the expression goes I'll cross that bridge when it comes that's it so I did a balancing page and then I made a 21 books to read in 20. 21 page. I wasn't going to do it, but I've been watching all of these because I'm catching up on booktube, all of these people setting up their 2021 journals videos. And so many people have pages like this or something similar. And I was like, you know what, let's do it. And I'm really happy with what I did because not only now that I'm looking at the list, is it a majority of BIPOC authors, but it is not a ton of fantasy. Like there's definitely some fantasy on here. Let me see. Okay, I lied. There's more fantasy than I thought. There's 17 fantasy books, but in years past, it would have been all fantasy books. So I'm glad that I've been able to mix in some. It's mostly YA magical realism or YA horror because I'm digging that. So I've done that. I've made my spreads for the month. Let me talk to you about the books that I have started right now for bingo. I told you the other day that I read The Magician's Nephew. That was fine. I decided to start with my BIPOC author book, which was Dread Nation. I read one chapter of that. I really didn't like it. It reminded me a lot of P. Jelly Clark's 
Ring Shout and Black God's Drum, which are the two books by him that I didn't like. I liked his other stuff like a lot, like four or five stars, but those two were both like maybe a two star for me. So I decided instead of continuing on with that and kind of forcing myself to read it, I looked up some reviews to see what people said to see if like maybe I could get a hint as to whether or not I would enjoy it more later on and I basically decided from that that I don't think I will but I only read one chapter so I didn't put it in my DNF shelf I put it back into my want to read shelf because I think another time in the future I'd like to try it again and maybe I'd like to try physically reading it instead of reading it with the audiobook it's back on my want to read shelf and then also I one of the reviews I was watching on YouTube she said spoiler warning but I like was kind of out of it so I didn't skip ahead. So I found out the ending of the book. So I definitely want to wait until that's a little bit more fuzzy for me. So I needed to replace that because my agreement with myself is I can DNF once and then I have to replace it. And if I DNF the second time, it counts. So I'm replacing it now and I replaced it. I did lots of research into books by BIPOC authors because I really wanted to find something not only that I loved but also that maybe wasn't so familiar with everyone like Dread Nation is kind of known by a lot of people and I feel like there are certain authors of color who everyone talks about and like they're great and I've read a lot of their books and their books are great but sometimes it's nice to read authors that like people don't talk about or don't mention or don't know. So I did a lot of research into some more unknown ones and I found this one called Sia Martinez and the Moonlight Beginning of Everything. Moonlit Beginning of Everything. And my library had the audiobook and it was eight hours and it was available. So I checked it out and I am like 15% through it right now. I'm loving it. Honestly, like there's a chance it is a five star when I finish. It's so good and it's so quick and it's just really, really enjoyable. And it did something that I love books doing and that is right before the book starts, she had all of the trigger warnings listed. And I think that's so important, especially when the trigger warnings, like for this book, um, I don't remember all of them, but I know that one of them was sexual assault. And it's it's important for people to know that going into books. And if you don't need trigger warnings, you can skip that section so it's not like a big deal, right? So this book, we are following a girl named Sia Martinez. And she is a, I don't remember if she is Mexican or Mexican-American. Um, but I, I believe she's Mexican-American. I know she's growing up in America, but her mother is Mexican and I cannot remember right now what her father is. So her mother has died because her mother was sent back to Mexico and I don't totally know how she died, but she died when Sia was in the United States with her dad and she really didn't know her mom that well. So Sia is in high school right now and she's kind of hanging on to her culture that her grandma and mother have taught her and she's trying to keep it alive in her and she's dealing with racism on a daily basis this is a contemporary work it takes place in modern times and she and her best friend is a black haitian descent girl have very religious ties and are kind of struggling with this idea of like she's struggling sia is because she doesn't totally believe as much in the religion as she used to since her mother passed, but uh, her best friend, whose name I can't remember, is very strong in her religion, but her parents are like crazy strong in their religion, and she's struggling with this idea of like, she loves God, she loves Jesus, but she doesn't love him in the same way that her parents do. Anyways, so a new boy comes to town and he's in their classes and he's really cute and I'm pretty sure Sia's is going to get with him eventually, but she's struggling because all they've said so far is she had a bad relationship in her past and she doesn't know how to move on from that. So I'm assuming at this point, I have no proof that the trigger warning I mentioned earlier is going to be effective is going to effectively be what is causing her to be hesitant about this boy i also there was a part so this book is ya contemporary but it is magical realism which is like something i love so the two girls were out in the desert because i think it i do not remember right now where it takes place but we're gonna say like arizona new mexico texas kind of an area so they're in the desert and they were out one night because uh, Sia spends a lot of time out there and they saw these blue lights in the sky and looked on Goodreads. And if you don't want to know, 
Um, I looked on Goodreads and it is marked as alien encounter. So I'm really excited to see how that continues. So yeah, I'm loving it. I'm going to continue on with it. I don't think I'll finish it today, but it's so good. I might just like keep listening to it. I'm going to get up now. I have some tasks to accomplish. I got to send out a few items for, that are late for Christmas gifts to people because I was sick and didn't want to send them before my trip. And I gotta fold some laundry and I need to go for a walk. As soon as my tasks are completed, I'm gonna be picking up Court of Miracles and reading my 50 pages for today. Me and my really good friend Kendall are buddy reading it together and I think we're reading 50 pages a day. I have it marked in the book so I don't have to worry about it. Good evening. So it is almost 6 p.m. I've officially finished everything on my to-do list, which has been a long day of doing, except editing my video that's coming out this Friday, which is fine because it's Sunday right now. So if I need to edit that video later in the week, I can. And then I haven't read my 50 pages of Court of Miracles yet, simply because that's my next thing to do. It's still just enough light out outside that I'm going to try to read on my porch for as long as it will allow me to. And then I'll come in and read inside, unfortunately. I'll have to, because it's gonna be dark. I actually just finished Sia Martinez and the moonlit beginning of everything. And oh my God, I loved it. I loved it so much. I mean, as you can tell, I read it in one day, which isn't uncommon for me, but I wasn't aiming to read it in one day. It was a five star. It got added to my favorites shelf on Goodreads. I honestly, there's a chance that it makes it on my favorites of the year. I definitely want to reread it again before the end of the year. Like it was so fantastic and I loved it and I can't believe that the second book I read this year the first book that wasn't a reread might be on my favorites of the year like it was so freaking good it was weird and unexpected and it was unique and fresh and it had a lot of things in it that I hate but somehow this author managed to do it in a way that I didn't hate it so yeah so now I have my board here let's see if I can get you to focus on it that is for the slot b-i-p-o-c author let's see if I can get this one out pretty easily I can remove this card so I'm going to add this back to the deck which means that I have officially read my first book and so tonight tonight last night I was thinking about it and I realized that not being able to see these cards until I finished three or two books is kind of hard. So I was thinking that as soon as I finish one slot, I should be able to see whichever uncovered books are next to them. So like if I finish this, I should be able to flip these two cards. If I finish this, I can flip this one. If I finish this, I can flip these two cards. Like, does that make sense? I feel like it's pretty self-explanatory. So I'm going to do that right now. And then I'm going to sit down and read The Court of Miracles. Let's flip them real quick. This one, which is title does not contain the letter B. Uh, oh, that's not a B. That's an R. Title does not contain the letter R. And then let's flip. Title does not contain the letter T. Okay, so I got two does not contains. Right after I finished this TBR video the other day, I shuffled the cards really well so that that kind of a thing isn't gonna keep happening. Um, but this month I'm not changing them, so it's gonna keep happening for January. Ugh, the House in the Cerulean Sea doesn't fit either of them. I was really hoping it was going to because I really wanna read that. Ugh, good evening. It has been a long day and so I'm gonna be doing a hair mask and I figured I would come to you and talk to you about the books that I've been reading. So it is Monday. It was my first day back to work in about two weeks. So I did work the Monday and Tuesday before Christmas, but I worked from home. So it kind of felt like I had those days off. Like I was working, but I was at home. So it was easier, nicer. I don't, I don't know. It was the first day I had worn makeup in over three weeks. So it was absolutely weird. I had to remind myself not to rub my face every single time I like looked in the mirror at work. Like if I go to the bathroom, wash my hands and look in the mirror, I'd be like, oh my God, why do I look so attractive? And then I'd have to be like, 
No, Amanda, you look nice when you're not wearing makeup. This is just an enhancement. The fun things that women get to go through every single day. So I read, I've read, I've started three books since I last talked to you. It's really funny. I think I'm failing my biggest goal for 2021, which was to read less and do other things because, I mean, it's the fourth and I've read two books and I'm in the middle of four at this moment. But you know what? It is what it is. But I didn't finish any today, which I think is a good sign. And I'm going to talk to you about each of them. They're, they're having varying degrees of success. So the very first book that I started last night is a buddy read that I'm doing with my good friend Kendall. I am so thankful that I have found someone who enjoys reading books similar to me and has a somewhat similar speed of reading so that we can read things together. So we are reading The Court of Miracles by someone someone. I don't remember. I'll show it later in this video if I haven't already shown it. It's like a Les Mis and The Jungle Book retelling. I didn't realize that it was going to have The Jungle Book in it. Um, I'm very familiar with Les Mis. I've seen the movie. I've seen it live off Broadway, of course, because I don't live there and I love it. I listen to the music, not daily, but every month at least I'm listening to the album. So I know the story really well, right? So the story so far really doesn't remind me too much of Les Mis, to be honest. I'm 50 pages in and I'm loving it first off. I was really shocked because the first chapter didn't really grip me at all, but I very shortly after that was like, oh my goodness, I'm loving it. So I think we're in chapter like six right now and I don't want to put it down. I'm actually just doing this hair mask, going to take my pot off the stove as soon as I'm done with this, and then I'm gonna sit down and read until I have to wash this out, which will be about 30 minutes to an hour. So it's good. It kind of follows these two girls, their sisters, their mom is dead, their dad is very neglectful, and one of them is sold by their father to, there's these different courts and he sells her to the court of flesh. So she's basically a prostitute. And that sister, as she's the older one, as she's leaving, realizes that probably a fate similar will befall her sister in a few years. So she gets her sister in touch with this man who takes her to the, the court of thieves and she becomes a thief there. She's pretty determined to get her sister back, but it's gonna be harder than she thinks. So that's where I'm kind of at with the book. I'm enjoying it so much right now. If it keeps going as well as it's going, yeah, it, it could get five stars, honestly. And I, I can be kind of a five star slut. I tend to give out five stars, not really nilly, but like if I'm just feeling it, I just give them out. But I do think that if this one continues being this good, it deserved its five stars. But I, I have a feeling it's not going to remain with that feeling by the end of it. Just based off of what I've heard a few other people say about the middle section, I think it's just going to kind of slow up and not be as interesting. But then again, sometimes I find things interesting that other people don't. The next book I started was Cemetery Boys, which is my book club's pick for the month. And I scheduled it this month so that we wouldn't be starting it on the first because I was going to be traveling on the first and the second. I started it this morning and I'm enjoying it. I'm not absolutely loving it, but I think I need to wait until the story picks up a little bit more, to be honest. It's about this trans boy. I think he's living near Los Angeles, um, but they definitely have Latinx family roots and his family is full of witches, which it translates better in Spanish. My limited Spanish, I used to be fluent in Spanish and it's been, oh God, how many years now? About seven since I've spoken it with anyone. So when characters in books talk in Spanish, I can generally pick up on what they're saying, just like in this book. But when people like in grocery stores are talking to me and they're saying like lots of things, I'm like, huh? Because in books, you know, they say like, they'll say like, mira, mira, and then they'll switch to English. And like, I know that mira means like, look, look, go look at that. I don't need to know everything else. But in the grocery store, people stop me and they only speak in Spanish. And then I'm like, um, I understood like 50% of that. I'm sorry. So it's about this trans boy who his family doesn't accept him. And the reason why I was saying that 
it makes more sense in Spanish is because the Spanish word for witch can be either male or female. And it's interesting because they make a point about how most Spanish words have a gender. I think all Spanish, well, all nouns in Spanish have a gender. And that's one of the comments that the main boy has where his father and his grandmother use the word, the noun with the A at the end as if he is a girl and his mother did not, does not. It's kind of interesting to see the Spanish influence on a transgender person because that's something that I've never gotten to experience before now. Um, but yeah, like I said, I'm not like totally, totally hooked into it yet, but I just met, if you read the summary online, I just met the ghost. So I think it's gonna pick up from here. I have like a million from my library, like I've mentioned. So I picked up another one from my bingo board, which is the Hazel Wood. This was the one for friend recommends and I knew nothing going into it, but let me tell you a little bit about it right now. So it's definitely like a contemporary magical realism. It kind of reminds me of like a younger version of the Starless Sea, but not quite because I absolutely adored the Starless Sea and I'm not sure how I feel about this book, to be honest. The writing's very different from the Starless Sea and the characters are extremely different from the Starless Sea. So it's following this girl whose mother grew up on fairy tales because her mother, so the main girl's grandmother, was like a fairy tale writer and was like a recluse and kind of there was this mystery surrounding her. And then I don't know what's in the summary, so I'm not gonna say too much, but the main girl has to go on an adventure with this boy who had read her grandma's stories and she hasn't read her grandma's stories because they're extremely rare. And every single time she like found them anywhere, they would disappear. So there's definitely like this magical realism feel to it, which I absolutely love magical realism. I love weirdness like that, but there's something about this book that's like not totally doing it for me. And while I'm listening to it, I'm like, there are parts that I absolutely adore and are a 100% four star. But then there are these sections that I'm like, I hate this. I hate it so much and I could DNF this book right now. So I don't know what I'm gonna rate it because the book is definitely definitely not a three star but it's kind of a two star and a four star at the same time I, I don't know how better to explain that honestly my biggest issue like as I am analyzing my situation trying to think about what I'm feeling about this book I think what's dragging it down for me is the characters the main character has lots of anger issues and she talks about it. So she knows she has anger issues and she tries to deal with them, but sometimes it's hard. And I understand, and I'm like, cool, that makes a well-rounded character, but I guess I just wanted to see some growth from her where maybe she's like still getting angry, but she's not acting so irrational about things. Like she gets angry and then is slowly learning how to control it. But I guess that's not the story that the author was trying to tell. And should I rate a book less because the author didn't want to tell the story I wanted to read. I I don't know. I don't know where we stand with that. I don't know how I feel about any of that. But this book is going to be really hard for me to rate. There is a sequel, so I'm super curious what that's going to be about and how I feel. At the well, my mother called me while I was filming. She seems to have a knack of doing that recently, and I don't know what's up, but me and her need to get on different wavelengths again. I um, finished up putting my hair mask on. It's got to sit for about another 20 minutes because I talked to her for a bit. So I haven't done any reading of Court of Miracles. But what I was saying is I'm not sure if I'm going to read the sequel to whatever the crap this book is. The Hazelwood. I don't know at this point if I'd be interested enough in doing it. But there is like a prequel, which is the grandma's fairy tales. And I think I'd be really interested in reading that. And... It's funny because I'm not into fairy tales. I don't like retellings. I don't really like fairy tales, to be honest, at all. But I think I would read these ones because they're so unique and so different. I will um, finish the book first, though, and make my decision afterwards because I don't think the fairy tales come out until actually sometime this month. And my library doesn't have them. So if I wanted to read them, I'd have to buy them. And I just don't know how I would feel about that. Maybe I should find a sample online because I want to use my bingo for something else.
Hi, it's Tuesday. Yeah, it's Tuesday. So I had a pretty good day today. I was busy at work most of the day, but I did manage to finish the Hazelwood. And I'm super, super anxious slash excited to see what these two cards are. So I'm not gonna sit and talk about it right now. I'm gonna flip these cards over. So firstly, I can take that out and not knock this board down. Next, let's start at the top. The title does not contain letter S. The house, ah, damn it. House of Cerulean C has all these letters. Let's see what the next one is. Title contains M. So I know when I wrote this card, I remember I was specifically thinking, oh, that'll be perfect for Malice, but I've um, already started Malice and I'm using it for another card. I think I have one for title does not contain a letter R, but I don't think I have a book for title does not contain the letter T. So I'm going to continue working and looking for that. I'll maybe even let you know next week on what those two are. Yeah, the House in the Sterling Sea doesn't have an M in it. And I specifically said title, so I can't like fudge it. And if the offer, although TJ Klune doesn't have an M in it either. Can you tell that I just want to read the House in the Cerulean Sea? So I made one chapter of progress on Cemetery Boys, nothing to say yet. I am on page like 140 of the Court of Miracles. I need to get to page 157 tonight, so it's not going to be an issue at all. And I finished the Hazelwoods. I had a really weird relationship with the Hazelwoods. I somehow both hated it viscerally and absolutely loved it. I wrote a pretty decent Goodreads review. I'm trying to get better about writing them even if they're kind of bullet pointed. So basically what it came down to is I didn't like any of the characters. I didn't like how pretentious especially the main character was and how she seemed to act like she was better than other girls especially. I didn't like the writing that much. I just felt like it read like a debut novel and it was a debut novel but I think that the author this is a great starting point for her and that she's going to do so many great amazing things and so I'm gonna keep following her and keep reading other books she writes just not the sequel to this one and then I um what else did I not love I don't remember there was another thing on the list you'll have to check Goodreads if you want to know it and then I loved the plot it was excuse me it was super weird and twisty and unique and it was just kind of all over the place but in the way that i seem to really enjoy in a magical realism contemporary book and i really loved the fairy tales and stories that were being told so it was super confusing i didn't know how to rate it i put on goodreads that it's somewhere between a 3.5 and a 4 but I just rounded up to a four because who the hell cares, right? Like nothing matters. We all die in the end and this is all going to be erased and no one legitimately cares what I rated the Hazelwood. So yeah, now I got to go find two more books. One that does not contain the letter S and one that does contain the letter M. Hello, it is Thursday as we know from it happening almost every single week. Wednesdays are just bad days for me to vlog. But it's Thursday now and I have officially finished Cemetery Boys. So I can remove my bookmark, which is a piece of junk mail that came. And I can remove it from the board, which also means I get to unlock another tile and see what I can read. So Cemetery Boys was a pretty decent read. I think, of course, the greatest part of this was its representation. Not only did it have a trans gay main character, but it had gay side characters and other trans characters. And then also on top of all of that, it had lots and lots of different cultural representation. The strongest of this was Latinx representation in the story. Of course, the main character is of Mexican and Cuban descent, although we also have a character who is of Puerto Rican descent and a character who is Colombian. So we get to see a lot of diversity in both the sexual orientation and in the genders and in the races. But overall, I didn't absolutely fall in love with the story itself. I fell in love with the characters. It is definitely a character driven book, but I am not a character driven book type of person. So while I loved the characters to death and I loved the atmosphere and I loved the representation, the story itself just felt like the plot was lacking in a lot of it and that the stakes really were kind of absent. I didn't feel anything was really keeping them going forward and what they were doing. There was nothing holding them into the story. And 
I just felt like nothing bad was going to happen at any point in time. I ended up rating it a three out of five star because it was a pretty decent book, but it wasn't absolutely my favorite book ever. And it takes me back to when I took my Asian and Asian American literature class in college, where my teacher used to say that for white people and white people's stories, not every story has to be the greatest one ever because there are so many of them. But when it comes to stories of people of color or people with minority representation, it feels like every single story has to be an absolute five star greatest one ever because there are so few of them. And she wanted to live in a world where it didn't feel like it needed to be that way, where it felt like we could have black stories that were mediocre and that's okay because there are so many of them that it's easy to find one that's absolutely fantastic. And I'm not saying that Cemetery Boys is mediocre. I think it was a really good book, but I don't think it was the greatest thing ever. And I think that's okay because people need mediocre, people need average, people need three star books that they can relate to. So let's flip the other card now. So that book was being read for my book club. So I am super excited to be talking about them, about it with them at the end of the month. And now let's see what this is. It's, I'm willing to bet it's another letter one because that's all we've been seeing so far. So let's go. Title does not contain the letter G. Oh God. I put these letter ones in here because they're kind of fun to have when you have like a few of them. But because my shuffling sucked at the beginning of this month, there's like 12 of them, it seems. And I'm getting tired of trying to find titles without certain letters. The final thing that I'm going to say to you now is even though it is Thursday, this is actually going to be my final clip for this reading vlog. I know it's already really long because I had so much to say at the beginning, so I'm okay with shutting it off here. I can't remember if I said at the beginning of this video or not that I had a death in the family and that this coming Saturday is the funeral. So. Tomorrow after work, I will be with family preparing for that kind of just being with family and then Saturday I will be at the funeral. So even if I do any reading, I just don't think it's going to be a time for me to vlog. So I'm just taking two days off of vlogging. I'll be back with you guys on Sunday, but you guys will be seeing this on Monday anyway, so it won't even affect anything. I want to say right now, thank you for watching. I hope you really like this new board setup and how I'm kind of driving it into my vlogs and how it's helping me shape how I'm going to be doing my videos. I really liked having the structure. I'm a structured person and I liked being able to flip so many of my tiles this week. It was really, really satisfying. Although, house in the Cerulean Sea. Oh my God, oh my God. Can I fit the house in the, the house in the Cerulean Sea? I can read the house in the Cerulean Sea for that tile. Okay, well you already know for the middle tile, I'm gonna be reading the house in the Cerulean Sea because I'm wanting to read it so freaking bad. Okay, okay, okay. So I hope you don't mind the structure and how I'm changing things in 2021, but I really like it. And I'm gonna be reading The House in the Cerulean Sea, so I'm really excited. And you guys got to just see my brain ticking on camera. Isn't it fun? So anyways, thank you all for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books. I would love to talk to you about them. Until next time, I don't remember how my outro goes, but I'll talk to you in the comments. Bye. Mm -hmm.